everyone, it's me Rhonda, also known as the Sparkly One. Today I have a special guest and her name is Robin and she is my dear friend that I have known for, I don't know, 25 years yes, probably. Yes. And she was our ministry, uh, women's ministry leader for the church that we attended and we also worked together a few years back. And so it's been such a pleasure to know her and I am sure you're going to love her because she has a new channel on YouTube and it's called Delight in Discipling. Yes. And oh, you guys are just going to fall in love with every guest that she has and everything that she talks about as far as discipling goes. And I would just love for you to go to her channel and subscribe because you're going to be so blessed. And if you're a woman of faith, that's the place you need to be. So. We are going to be making cookies together today, and they're called Grandma Dory Cookies. Yes. Yeah, yes. and Robin will have a great story to tell about how she came up with the Grandma Dory Cookie. Yes. So hopefully you'll enjoy this video, and we'll go ahead and get started. So today, what we are doing uh, together for both of our channels is a little bit of cooking, and this uh, recipe that we're making is called Grandma Dory Cookies. So we're going to begin to assemble the recipe and I will tell you about who Grandma Dory is and how we arrived at that name. So this is a delicious cookie. It is a wonderful holiday cookie. It does, it does keep well except that people just gobble them up like <laughs> chocolate chips. Yes. So uh, a single batch makes, um, for me, makes 26 cookies. So just slightly over, what is that, a baker, two baker's yeah, dozen. right. Exactly. Um, and you will see uh, on the cookie sheet there are 13 cookies. And it just works out that way for me. And um, so they go very quickly, though. They get eaten up quickly. In 10 minutes. Yes, yes. And yeah. how we arrived at even doing this video is I had made some for Rhonda and her husband Jim. Yes. Loved them. Yes. So we promised him a batch of yes. these today. So, so this is for you, Jim. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so the first thing you need is softened butter. And I like challenge butter. I would use a high grade um, butter that is um, a good quality butter, butter. This is a salted butter. And you can see, I'm going to squish it a little bit. You can see how soft this is. So I left this butter out overnight. And, are um, we putting both in? Yes. Okay. So we are going to put um, two cubes of butter into the mixer. And I try to get every little bit of butter. And the, the butter matters. Probably the quality of your butter will be the most important thing yep. in this recipe. Thank you. I'll then, throw this away. Yes, thank you. So add to that one cup of sugar. Super easy. Just measure out a cup of sugar. And who doesn't love a delicious yes. cookie? Oh my yes. gosh. And these are, they are delicious. Like my husband, I brought them home one night when Robin gave them to me. And he was like, oh my gosh, I love these cookies. I need more. <laughs> so just one cup of sugar. And then you mix that and you cream that together so it's really nice and creamy. And a little on the fluffy side. Whoops, my bowl is oh. not locked in. There we go. So we're going to let that mix for a minute. While that's happening, I'm going to measure out the flour. This recipe is so easy and it only has eight ingredients. This recipe, it will matter that you sift the flour oh. because you really want it to to have your other your other dry ingredients mixed very well. So not uh, not all recipes that matters, but this one it will. And then one cup of flour, one and three quarters cup. Okay. One so this quarters. is one cup and then oh, okay. three quarters of a cup. Then I pre-measured the other dry ingredients, and you can probably see them here. Just like a it's, cooking show. Yes, just like <laughs> a cooking show. So you have soda, baking soda. Uh, uh, baking powder and salt and so I've already pre-measured that and it is a half a teaspoon of each so you just dump that in there and you shift it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you want to yeah, crank it up a little? Uh, nope, you can turn it off. You want to turn it off? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to sift these dry ingredients together. I love that old I know, fashion this is, one. I have one that, but it, you just squeeze it. Yours oh, is yes. a little older than mine. <laughs> yes. This is ancient. I've probably had this as long as I've been married. So, Aww. long time. So, to this... And to, how long have you been married? Uh, 46 years. Wow, that's so great. I love it. It is great. Yes. I love my guy. Yes. So, this is one teaspoon of vanilla. 
that. And we're going to mix that up okay. carefully. Uh huh. On a low speed or medium? Um, you can do a little bit higher right there. That's okay. good. That's good. It smells so good. <laughs> oh my gosh. That vanilla, you know. Is that good? Or That's good. Want? Okay. And then I'm going to scrape the sides of the bowl. You can see how fluffy it is. It's almost like the consistency of an icing. Yes, it looks like whipped cream to yeah. me. Yeah, because it's very white. So we want to make sure that it... Um, you get every little bit of sugar yes. incorporated. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to lock it and then turn it on. Oh. And we're going to carefully so add So you the, turn it on first before uh -huh. you add it. Okay. And then I'm going to carefully add it. Do you get a dust so clap? Here, see let's, let's move this maybe this way a little. Is that there better for you? Yeah. Okay. So you can see it. Just let it blend carefully. No dust cloud. That's great. Yeah. yeah. If you do it slowly and not just yeah. dump it all at once, you'll be fine. And I don't have the mixer on at a really high speed. It's on the lowest setting. And we will speed it up once I get all the dry ingredients in there. So just... This is a very delicate cookie. That's how I want yeah, to say it. Yeah, it is. It's not, it's not a difficult cookie to make at all. Um, but it is like a little tea party cookie. Yes. I would say that. Yeah. Yes. So I'm going to so dump good. the rest of this in there. Perfect. And as soon as it sort of all moisturized, it's moist, okay. I turn it up a little bit. So it's you kind don't of want it, a dough. Yes. Okay. So yeah. you don't want it to over, over beat it. And then the last ingredient. Okay, so this is just three quarters of a cup of uh, crispy rice. Um, I use just a generic brand of crispy rice, so there's nothing special about that. So three quarters of a cup, and you just add it to the cookie mixture. You turn it back on, and you can kind of hear it crunch a little bit. And again, you don't want to overbeat. You just want it blended in carefully. That's about it. So I'm going to just mix, make sure all my dry ingredients are um, completely mixed in. And while I'm rolling these, I'll tell you the story of Grandma Dory. Yay! So you can see it ends up just being a mixture. If yours, if you make this and it doesn't look like this, then your butter probably was not soft enough. And you really can't rush it. So I have... Because would it turn out too dry? It, okay. it, and it doesn't, if it's not, if your butter's not really soft, it won't um, absorb all the sugar, flour, and the little Rice Krispies. So... Oh, yeah. It really should sort of look like that. So I'm going to wash my hands real quick, and then I'm going to show you how we do this. Yep. I'm going to take a scoop of dough, and it's about that much. I mean, I've been making this recipe for, uh, gosh, almost 40 years. So I just do it by feel. So you just take a... A ball. A ball. <laughs> so. And Robin has four grandchildren. Yes. Two boys and two girls. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And they're adorable. All toe heads. Yes. And white all, hair. Yeah. All, they, yeah. In fact, they look more like Rhonda yeah. than me. <laughs> well, no, I think we look a lot alike, actually. Yes. Yes. In fact, um, people would get us confused a lot when we worked at church because my name is Robin and Rhonda's name is Rhonda. <laughs> and um, in those days, I lightened my hair more than I do now, so it was um, pretty blonde. Yeah. And I can see where people would get us yeah. confused. Yeah, I worked as a receptionist, and she was part of the women's ministry and counseling and benevolence and stuff like that. And yeah. so <laughs> they would come in, and they would call oh. me Robin, and then they would call her Rhonda. And then yeah. I, we would just accept it. We wouldn't even correct them, really. Yeah, and we just got used to we're it. We're like, okay, whatever, you know. <laughs> and we did um, we did a lot of funerals together. A lot of funerals, and, yeah. And we would be in the same room, and people would get us confused even when we were sitting next to each other in the same room. Yeah. The story behind these cookies. So when my husband and I were um, living in Orange County, Orange County, California, um, we had, um, our first daughter was born in 1979. So those of you that are familiar with my channel, I've talked about sort of my spiritual journey and the significant year of 1979 when my daughter was born. Uh, let me pause right there and you will see Three, five, eight, ten, thirteen cookies. She's and, got it down. Yes. <laughs> so then you just take a, a oh. fork and you just sort of flatten them a little bit. Again, you don't smush them. 
but you just flatten them a little bit and you'll end up with this pretty little uh, stripe across the top of the cookies. So cute! So that's what they look like. Yay. And I'm going to pop this in the oven. The oven is set at 350. Set for 15 Does it clock minutes. when it's time's up? Uh, it should. It <laughs> yeah, doesn't. It should. <laughs> but it doesn't. I'm going to do the second Wow, batch. this is so easy. Such an easy recipe. I love this. So, I had our daughter in uh, 1979 and then I had another daughter in 1982 and then I had a son in 1985. But we, um, we lived in Orange County and my parents lived in Los Angeles County and my husband's uh, parents lived in um, a distant area from where we lived. Initially they, initially they lived out of state, they lived in Connecticut. But what happened um, in 1981 when my daughter was um, just two years old, my oldest daughter, my mother-in-law passed away and it was devastating to our family it was it was just heartbreaking and um, one of the greatest losses was my daughter losing a grandmother and my mother at that time was still working full-time and was not readily available to us and she lived about 75 miles away so we only saw her once or twice a month but there was a woman across the street from us that was just a sweet, sweet older woman. And we began to call her Grandma Dory because she was a surrogate grandmother to my daughter, my oldest daughter particularly. And um, my daughter loved her and would go over there. And she and her husband were both retired. And it's hard for me, you know, they probably were in their 60s and they seemed oh, so it. old to yeah. me. <laughs> that's it. But I was still in my 20s. <laughs> right. So they, they did seem old. Seem old. Yeah. Yes. Aww. But um, Dory made these cookies like, I don't know, three or four times a week for her husband. Wow. And they, um, we ended up calling them Grandma Dory cookies because of her. But the significant part for, for my gals on my channel is that we, when our, um, particularly for our children, when they do not have grandparents, which are is such an important, vital part of their lives, we need to look for opportunities for other women to be that role in their life, to have that place of being a loving, affectionate grandmother. And Grandma Dory was that for us and for my daughter. Oh, I man. spoke to her last, I spoke to my daughter last night and I asked her about her memories. And um, Grandma Dory lived right across the street from us and it was um, in a residential area and so there was no risk of harm to her. And when she was, by the time she was about four, I would um, watch her from my window, I would watch her and she would run across the street to Grandma Dory's and um, spend time with her. Aww. And they lavished on her and, and were very affectionate. And the beautiful thing about Grandma Dory and Lee um, was that their grandchildren, their biological grandchildren, lived in Idaho, so they lived out of state. So it was the sweetest relationship because they got to dote on my daughter in a way that they would have had their grandchildren been close to home. Mm, and that. for my daughter, she got to, to have an affectionate relationship with a surrogate grandma. So I asked her last night about it and um, she had fond memories and Grandma Dory also was um, a beautiful piano player. She played in her church and she would play music and I could hear the music from across the street. Um, it was just a sweet, sweet relationship. Aww. So ladies, I would encourage you, if you don't have grandchildren next to you, see who in your neighborhood or in your church family that you can sort of adopt as your grandchildren. And um, those relationships are precious. And my daughter, who's now in her 40s, still has very sweet, fond memories of that season. Oh, I love that. So here's another 13 cookies. We're going to do the same thing. I'm not going to put these in the oven until the other ones are complete. My mother makes these cookies now. My, my mother is still living. She's 92. And she likes hers crisp. Um, to get them on the crisp side and where they're browned, is, it's going to take about 20 minutes. But you're going to see, I'm going to take out ours at 15 minutes. 
and um, they will be colorless. They will pretty much look like this except flatter. And that will keep them as a, as a moist, soft cookie. If you prefer a crispy, uh, you know, just a more Crunchy. bite and a crunchier taste, just leave them in. But do watch them, and I would say not longer than 20 minutes. Okay, yeah, because we'll have a burnt cookie. <laughs> yes, oh, yes. If you like yes. it burnt, then longer. Then longer is, is fine, yeah. so that's good. Um, just to play off of your grandma yes. thing, Yes. Um, I have a friend, and she's 92, yeah. And my grandma died when I was 17, my mom's oh. mom. And so I, you know, replaced her with other grandmas, like my yeah. husband's grandmother or, you know, older women. I've always been drawn to older women and they, because I think of the discipling, right, yes. and the mentoring and just coming alongside of someone as they're raising their kids and they've helped me do that. Yeah. So you're never too old to have a grandma in your life, right? Yes. You don't have to be yes. a child, but you can be an adult. And she even called me right before I came here Seriously? to let me know that uh. another friend of hers and mine who was 94 passed away. So she realizes, because she's 92, that she doesn't have a whole lot of time left. And it gives me chills talking about it yeah. because she said, I just want to tell you what a great mom you are to your kids oh. and how much I appreciate your friendship all these years. And because I met her at another yeah. church. And yeah. It was just so precious. So the grandmother in your life is just, it just is something that just warms your heart so much. And they encourage us no matter what age we are, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, um, some of us, like for me, I, I've just shared with you, my mom is 92. My mother's mother lived past 100 and oh was goodness. still vibrant and lived alone uh, the, up until the last maybe six to eight weeks of her life. And, um, uh, so I grew up with my grandmother, so I would have been, um, I was 46. Yes. I was yeah. 46 when she passed. Gosh, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, because I've never yeah. had a grandma in that, you know, when yeah. I'm, I'm older. Because yeah. my other grandmother died when I think I was 30 or something like that, yeah. you know. So yeah. that's why I'm drawn to these women, yeah. and I never realized it until we just started talking about it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's very sweet. So I... Um, for the ladies that watch my channel, I, I just challenge you to um, invest in discipleship relationships. And it literally can be a child that you are investing in, that you're praying for, that you're talking about Jesus. And Dory did that with my daughter. Um, she, like I say, played the piano at her church. She was a devout Christian. And uh, she just had the sweetest, most genuine heart and invested in my daughter in ways that... that um, was not possible by her biological grandmothers. And uh, it was just a wonderful, beautiful relationship. That's so special. Yeah, really. Okay, We're back. Yes. <laughs> we took these out of the oven right at 15 minutes. Uh, one of the tricks is to leave them on the cookie sheet for a few minutes. If you try to take them off too soon, they literally will fall apart because they're such a, a kind of moist cookie at this point. So we're going to uh, chat for another minute and let these cool, and then you will see me very gently remove them from um, the cookie sheet. Uh, one thing I did not mention is that I always use parchment paper. It does um, help with this cookie. It's sort of a barrier, so it still allows the heat without them getting stuck or even brown on the bottom. You can see that the uh, cookies have flattened slightly, but they're going to be super easy to lift off the cookie sheet. And they won't crumble or fall apart. Oh, they look so good. I almost thought there were potato... Let me say that over. Yeah. I almost thought there were potato chips in these. Potato chips. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, maybe. <laughs> I almost thought there was potato chips in these cookies, but they're actually the Rice Krispies or crispy rice. Crisp. Yeah, but they look so good. And have you ever like sprinkled powdered sugar on them or anything? Remember how um, I, I did have the cookies? It. Yes. So yes. that could be a nice option if someone and, likes a yeah, little sweeter. Yeah, make a little festive. Yeah. Even at Christmas, I imagine you could put some little colored sugar on it. Oh, you know, true. A little bit of, yeah. And make them a little more Christmas yeah. cookie. And look, Robin has the most beautiful like presentation she always has like these beautiful little dishes and at the church office oh my gosh I loved her office because yeah. she had it so girly and so beautiful and it actually looks a lot like her house yeah it's <laughs> so, yeah, yeah it does. you have the same colors always fresh flowers mm -hmm. and just oh, 
Yeah. Adorable. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, it's um, uh, like my home, and and again, those that you have seen my videos, um, I try to create uh, an environment where w women feel welcome and can feel vulnerable, and um, that I'm trustworthy and can uh, they can you know share their heart and without any sort of condemnation or ridicule. And um, and part of that for me is just a pretty environment. Yeah, so I and love fresh flowers. It matches your heart, you know. Yeah. Really, is what I say because you know you're. It's like just Robin exudes joy and love and care for people, and everybody is just drawn to you just uh, because you you do truly care about women. And, I and oh, it just it makes me want to cry because she put so much time and effort in our women's ministry. And it was like the best ministry ever. And you look at me, <laughs> we're like crying. But it was just so rewarding to go to church and come home with that joy that she would impart into all the women. And at that point, you didn't even really know me. But I am just one of uh, many women that were drawn by your, you know, your love and care for us women. And we always wanted more. That's very More kind. Robin. <laughs> very, very kind. Uh, but ladies, we all have the ability to be a caring and loving woman. Yes. That is something that God grants us. And it's a matter of uh, yielding to the Spirit of God, letting the Holy Spirit uh, be in us and guide our thoughts and our hearts and our minds. And the potential is for all of us to be women who care and love well. So, yeah. That's our challenge. She's done that. So here are the cookies that Robin made, and they are going to be so yummy. So we're going to sit down and eat our cookies. But I just wanted to say thank you so much for joining us today. Don't forget to go over to Robin's channel, Delight in Discipling. I will put it in the show notes and also along the edge of the screen. And I will link some of her videos right here so you can check oh, those thank out. You. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And so anyway, just thank you so much and God bless all of you. Thank you. You're a huge blessing to both of our yes. channels because without you guys, we wouldn't be doing this. And so we just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ron. We love you. I love you. Bye. Bye, guys. Take care. See you next time. Oh, my gosh. I didn't even eat breakfast. I didn't either. Mm. I had a Rice Krispie treat. The Rice Krispies are hiding around the corner. Mm. <laughs> mm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Everything's better with butter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Robin, they're so good. Thank you so much for sharing this. Mm -hmm. oh. This could be our outtake. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>